What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today, ooh, today we are talking about a good one. This is the Mont Blanc Petit Prince. I don't know how to say it. I'm not French. It's Mont Blanc Petit Prince and uh, it is, ooh, she's a stunner. This is a traditional cigar, cigar? It's a traditional cigar shaped pen. <laughs> cigar shaped pen. Um, which is funny because I normally typically prefer like the edged ones like a, you know, Sailor Pro Gear or uh, Aurora uh, Optimas, things like that. Um, but I guess because my brain, my twisted little commercialized brain thinks, hey, you know, Mont Blanc is a good brand. Maybe you should buy it. Um, I don't mind the cigar shape. Um, so it kind of like tapers towards both ends. Um, and I think it's pretty cool. It's a deep blue material um, with like chromed edges and finishes, um, which I think looks really nice actually. Um, so the body of the pen tapers to the right to be a piston knob, which is completely chromed. And then the left of the pen tapers to be the top of the cap, um, which of course has the famous uh, Mont Blanc peak. Um, which is like the, the very top of the mountain. The um, chrome portion just under the, the Mont Blanc cap um, does have an inscription on it. It is a quote from the book that uh, Le Petit Prince is based off of. Um, again, I am not French, so I will not even attempt <laughs> to pronounce it, but I will write it uh, at the bottom of the page here um, because oh baby after grade nine did I drop French like a hot potato. Um, I do kind of wish I kept it. It's one of those things where like when you're a kid you freaking hate it so you drop it and then as an adult you kind of kick yourself in the butt for not sticking it out and learning um, because it'd be very nice and very handy um, to learn two languages or to know two languages. Um, I'm fascinated by polyglots who can speak many, 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 many languages. Um, it is just, oh my gosh, hashtag goals. I can't believe I just said hashtag. Anyway, moving on, <laughs> the cap itself is uh, engraved very subtly um, in the fox face. So it's something that, you know, just holding the pen here, you can't see that. Um, it's something that, you know, somebody sitting across the table from me can't really tell. Um, but when you have it in your hand and you're looking at it, you can clearly see it. And it's a cool kind of adornment to the pen where it makes it special to you, um, but it's still very, you know, boardroom friendly. And even when you feel it, um, you can't even really feel the engravings because it's done so well, so smoothly. Um, that it's it's really really well done um, the clip has a little yellow star on it sorry I got distracted by my cat has a little yellow star on it um, that some people love it some people hate it um, to me I'm sort of in between I'm a little slightly towards the would rather it not be there but it is a part of the story so that's why it's there but it certainly doesn't bother me and clearly it didn't stop me from buying it um, and then towards the base of the cap, it has three bands, um, small, thick, and small. The one in the middle uh, says Mont Blanc Meisterstück, um, and it is engraved. I continue to be distracted by Parker. I mean, how could I not? She's so cute. Um, if you unscrew the uh, cap here, the pen sits very nicely in my hand. It can be posted pretty back heavy uh, in my opinion once I do that, um, probably because of the metal and of course the metal at the ends here. Um, fits very nicely in my hand. Smaller grip section, this is the 146 size uh, in the Mont Blanc uh, sizing sphere, which I think is the most common um, size that most people will want, the Mont Blanc 149, although you know coveted by some is pretty big. It's a pretty hefty pen. Um, if you've ever used the Jinhao 159, um, that'll give you a really good idea of what the Mont Blanc 149 would look like. Um, of course, it has the ink window in the, the body there, so you'll always be able to tell how much ink you have, um, which is really, really nice. The threads are very smooth, so even though it's a shallower grip section um, and my thumb always rests on the threads, I never feel it. 
And the nib uh, is a rhodium plated nib, um, so it's silver, but it is a gold nib. Um, I have the oblique medium, first oblique I've ever had, which is really, really cool. Um, I've been spending some time with this nib, learning how it writes. Um, I'll talk more about that in the writing section, of course, um, but I really, really do like it. Um, and then a plastic feed. Um, so the pen overall, I really enjoy. Um, I quite like the size of the uh, Mont Blanc 146. Um, it's similar to uh, a Platinum 3776. All these numbers, man. Um, so if you've ever used one of those, the size is very similar. The weight is heavier, um, but the size itself is pretty similar. Um, I really, really like this pen so much so I actually bought the next version of the Mont Blanc uh, Le Petit Prince Aviator, which is the um, deep burgundy color. Um, so stay tuned for that because that review will be coming out shortly as well, probably within the next two to three weeks. I'm just gonna bracket that because <laughs> I haven't filmed it yet, um, but it's definitely coming up soon. Um, so stay tuned. <laughs> Um, you know, might as well plug, just hit the subscribe if you want to see it. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really dig this pen. I've been throwing pictures of it up left, right, and center on my Instagram, which is also just pens and tea. I am plugging everything today. Um, and I talk about it a lot in my stories. Um, I really like doing Insta stories. It's kind of like doing YouTube videos, but you get to like do little snippets like all the time and you don't really have to edit. It just goes up. So I like those, <laughs> um, but I'm going to stop rambling about this pen. Um, and I'm going to show you my most important and favorite feature of said pen, which is how it writes. All right. <clears throat> the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Uh, the ink is Mont Blanc uh, Heritage spider whatever it is i can't remember off the top of my head but i will put a link down below uh, and by link i mean just like a text thing here saying what it is this is the mont blanc uh petit prince i don't know how to say it either because i'm not french <laughs> um the cheaper of the editions <laughs> uh with an oblique medium nib um what's cool about this nib and this is the first time i've ever used uh, an oblique anything um is that depending on the angle at which you hold the pen, which I was not expecting, you'll get different line widths. Um, and depending on the angle, you'll get more extreme, uh, more broad, more medium. But because it's an oblique, it means that the nib is cut on an angle. Um, so you do have to hold it slightly on that angle as well. Um, to get the most out of that line variation. Uh, you can push a little bit to get more, but it's not meant to, so I wouldn't necessarily do it. Um, and because of that, you can't really reverse. It feels terrible and it doesn't write. Um, but in normal position, um, it does write pretty well and it's pretty wet, which I love. Um, you have to be careful again with the, the way that you hold your pen. So if you rotate, it's going to stop working. Um, I've only run into that a couple times, um, where my nib starts, stops writing and it's because of the way that I'm holding the pen. Um, typically I don't rotate it. So whatever position, um, my hand is in, um, it'll stay that way, except for sometimes when I get to the very end of this page, you know, my hand does want to curl slightly this way and you cannot do that with that nib. Um, so I think it's really interesting. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, it can keep up no problem with, with speed of writing. Um, but you do slow down naturally with this nib just because of that obliqueness and because I'm not used to it. I do tend to write a little bit slower um, just so I don't accidentally overturn my nib. Uh, but I really, really like this pen uh, a lot actually. Um, I'm glad I did because it's definitely an expensive pen. Um, like I said earlier, I did pick this one up on sale. Um, so if 
really if if you get a chance to and you know you're able to afford it definitely pick this up i really like it um, i think the next time i get an oblique nib i will get a broad um, because you do know uh, like you do notice it especially if i compare you know my journal entries kind of thing between an oblique medium and a regular medium i do see a little bit of a difference but it's very fine um you know, you don't notice like a whole lot it's subtle um, which I kind of like, um, but I think I want to try like an oblique broad or or even double broad uh, Just you know for funsies um, But guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it uh, Hit that like button if you liked it hit the subscribe if you haven't done so yet already uh, Follow me on Instagram, which is pens and tea. I post a lot over there um, So you'll be able to see things in between each video posting and as always guys Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I love you and I'll see you next time Bye. Hello, sweet girl. Yeah. Parker, can you tell the people that even though you're named Parker, you're not named after the pen? Or Peter Parker? Just because mama liked that name. Yeah. Just because mama liked that name. Yes. Oh, just look at the bellies. Look at the bellies. Give them kisses. <laughs> oh, yes. You like them just as much as they like you, huh? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, we gotta go. Mama needs some belly time.